Welcome to the final webinar in our series on Mastering 21st Century Enterprise Risk Management. Today we look at the new rules of risk management and by looking at emerging best practices discuss how enterprise risk management should look going forward. We'll hear from Greg Carroll, founder and technical director at FastTrack, an enterprise compliance firm in the Gold Coast. Greg has 30 years of experience in governance, risk management and compliance implementing risk management systems. He also has decades of ERM expertise with multinational enterprises like Motorola, Fosters and Serco. Greg? Thanks, Fiona. All right. Um, in, in my first talks on firing failed risk practices, I gave my view of why uh, risk management, to put it kindly, is stuck in the 20th century, but I could have easily have said that uh, it's stuck in the dark ages. Predominantly operational risk in nature and using unstructured subjective guesswork and process management in the hope of avoiding risk, it's led to a widespread disillusionment with uh, enterprise risk management amongst C-level executives. Uh, there was a 2013 Milliman research report that found Operational risk is one of the major causes of organisational failure and destruction of shareholder value. And then there was the KPMG survey who put it, expectations of risk management are outpacing its capabilities. So let's look at my visions of enterprise risk management for the 21st century. The only things that I see that need fixing are our approach, the culture, the structure of the ERM systems, um, modelling used to evaluate levels of risk, how we aggregate risk across uh, the company, the nature of risk objectives and the current tools we use to manage risk. This talk's not meant to be a, a, a comprehensive framework of risk management, nor is it meant to be a detailed um, how-to guide on modelling. Hopefully it will be an agenda to start discussions on moving enterprise risk management into its rightful place as an invaluable tool for strategic planning and proactive management. I believe we can move forward um, if we approach risk management with a positive focus on growth strategies as well as threats, if we actively engage staff to transform the organisation's culture, if we accept the need uh, for multiple frameworks that can coexist happily together based on their differing natures of risk. We move to a scenario based analysis for mapping risk outcomes and drop that old um, risk matrix. Move from setting process based risk objectives to linking them more to the corporate objectives, especially increasing shareholder value. We aggregate risks based on uh, those corporate objective measurements uh, both vertically and um, horizontally, uh, using neural networking to handle those complex relationships. And finally, start using some of the uh, 21st century uh, tools like big data and social media and business intelligence. So why change our risk, risk practices? Of all the reasons I put forward in my previous talks, the biggest reason to transform current risk uh, practices is you. In a current survey um, on risk management, uh, one of the, what they disliked about their roles, although there was the usual diverse range of dislikes, the universal number one dislike was remuneration. A, a, a sad fact of life is that support roles, like nursing, are paid considerably lower than business growth roles such as investment banking. The message here is clear, transform risk management from a business support role to a growth strategy and you will improve the salaries of those who drive it. As I mentioned, we need to reorient our focus to achieving positive outcomes. Our role is to provide proactive and value adding tools to operational management. This means changing our approach to include looking for opportunities as well as threats. And this is done by having a positive quantifiable business objective for every risk practice, opportunities or threats. The first step is to eliminate pointless administration overhead by automating task management. Second, 
involve operational management in the final review of strategic plans. If you don't do it, no one will. As Sir Isaac Newton put it, an object will continue either at rest or at constant velocity unless acted on by an external force. You are that force. Uh, cultural change. Uh, that's the big one. Um, I, I covered understanding risk appetite and tolerance in my uh, first talk and in my second talk I suggested the role of a sea level risk champion to drive change. And I also covered the strategy of using employee uh, motivations to gain cultural change. The biggie I mentioned was publicising uh, that success. To achieve cultural change, you have to communicate like it's the 21st century. To coin an old refrain, vote early and vote often. Forget the newsletter or notice board. Think of new things like starting a weekly program like uh, on the couch with the CEO. Have staff vote bad practices out of the house from their phones. Use social media to encourage forums and discussions on business topics. You don't have to worry about staff sitting on Facebook or YouTube all day. You can stop your, your kids from going near the stove or you can teach them to cook. What do you think is going to produce better results? Being afraid of new technology or learning to harness it for, the, <coughs> for its benefits. You don't have to use Facebook. There are other uh, fully internal social networking systems that can be set up, like Yammer. Uh, instead of Skype, use Microsoft's Link or Citrix GoToMeeting to set up uh, internal TV stations. If you look at uh, LinkedIn forums, you'll see how simple questions can start transforming discussions. Harness widespread commitment through the use of fun applications is probably the best way you can get cultural change. Talk to your risk champion to make it happen. You'll be surprised how keen IT will be to get their hands on these new toys. In part one, I explained the different natures of risk and the incongruity of trying to consolidate them into a single framework. I'll refer you back to that talk, I'm not going to go through that detail now, but uh, even just this week on LinkedIn, someone suggested uh, the idea of averaging exposures to consolidate um, risks. You know, there's no circumstances and we would want to do that. It's like having one foot in boiling water and the other in ice, on average you're perfectly comfortable. With an enterprise risk management system, contrary to the, the common view, I see strategic risk as the umbrella over all other risks grouped by their nature. Strategic risk has the advantage of being directly related to business strategies and therefore business objectives. Restructuring current risk practices to be outcome focused instead of process or controlled focused and to have those <coughs> excuse me, uh, outcomes tightly coupled to corporate objectives allows for a meaningful aggregation over disparate operations and natures of risks. Evaluating the risk outcomes in terms of capital or contribution, metric tons or even mandates lost allows for a simple aggregation of financial or safety or reputational risks into a usable value. Conversely, it also allows senior executives to understand the importance and value of specific controls based on their impact on business objectives. Scenario analysis. Scenarios are an important tool in strategic planning. Um, scenario analysis has emerged as probably the leading tool um, for strategic planning where um, the future is surrounded by a high level of uncertainty or complexity, i.e. business. Scenario analysis is about taking drivers and influences and constructing multiple scenarios or alternative views of the future. Let me try to explain the concept. Um, if you accept that any situation or outcome is the result of a number of contributing factors influencing the course of events, then by identifying the turning points and possible directions events can take, you can develop a number of potential scenarios that may occur. If we rank the probability of each of these scenarios, and identify the sensitivity of each of the influencing factors, not only can you develop an early warning system to avoid negative outcomes, but you can also identify the fastest and most efficient path to an objective by acting on those influences. 
you know, this is what the aim of uh, scenario analysis is about. The probability of someone falling and hurting themselves may normally be low, but it will increase dramatically if that person's been working long hours or there's condensation on the floor or they've got a previous history. A single risk factor is not really realistic. Here on the slide in front of you, I've, I've got a, a typical scenario analysis diagram listing down on the left side the different stages or dimensions through which a, a situation will evolve. And then to the right, I've got the possible options at each one of those stages. By working through the possible combinations, uh, we come up with a number of potential scenarios or alternate views of the future. Scenario analysis consists of three basic stages. Um, the first one's the problem analysis itself, where you come up with a, an exact definition of the problem. You then move on to what's referred to as systems analysis, where you identify the um, relevant uh, influencing factors on that problem to be investigated. And thirdly, you then have the synthesis process, which examines the interdependencies between those influencing factors and establishes alternate scenarios. The recommended method for brainstorming to identify these events and drivers and influences and possible outcomes is known as the Delphi method. This is where a panel of your internal subject matter experts answer a series of questions in two or three rounds. After each round, a facilitator provides an anonymous um, summary of the experts' forecasts, as well as their uh, reasons for their judgments. In this way, they have an opportunity to revise their opinions, and then we just repeat the process again. Hopefully, this leads to the group converging on a consensus. Studies have shown, though, that there's little benefit of more, more from more than about two, three rounds. This technique is particularly powerful when undertaken by different experts from different parts of the business on the same event. It removes the, their individual biases. The key issues scenario analysis is to identify are the business objectives, the business drivers, the outcomes, the risk factors and controls. The last item, risk factors and controls, is where the current risk practices tend to start and finish. There are numerous methods for undertaking scenario analysis and it's easy to get bogged down and hence do nothing. Uh, if you look at you know, a room full of economists, well, uh, only thing they will agree on is that everyone else is wrong. And that's because there's a plethora of statistical theories and probability distributions and simulation methods. Better to, as a first step, is to um, just choose the easiest one for you and integrate into that in interdependency triggers that allow the whole system to evolve and then it will be effective. Just as uh, a problem with your liver can affect your eyesight, so a problem with the warehouse will have performance, uh, will hurt the performance on a, of a credit department. Everything is interconnected. Operational management without specialist risk training or knowledge have difficulty in identifying and analysing complex systems and structures and the relationships that um, influence events. The key here is to use a technique known as cognitive, cognitive mapping. It's similar to mind mapping but concentrates more on the relationships than the concepts. If used on risk events identified previously in our scenario analysis, and if you add into that the relationships and influences identified by your uh, panel of experts, you'll end up with uh, what can be called a scary looking causal tree. Resist the urge to simplify that tangled web that results. It would be the equivalent of giving yourself or the system a, a lobotomy. Instead, highlight those concepts that are referred to as highly connected and concentrate on these. Ensure that they lead back to the, a, a corporate objective. You can either use graph theory or there's a computer program uh, available called Decision Maker by Banksia Software. Um, I'll supply a link to that um, or to their site and reference material at the end of the talk. My next aim would be to have a more realistic method of guessing likelihood. 250 years ago, a man by the name of Thomas Bayes developed a formula that um, 
to calculate the probability of an event conditional on another event. And it's referred to as Bayesian networks. Using this on the highly connected causes and drivers found in our cognitive map, along with uh, modern day computer algorithm um, available, modeling complex Bayesian networks isn't that hard. It provides significant advantage over a traditional Monte Carlo method in that it provides greater sensitivity plus allows for stress testing and what-if analysis. For example, a system nearing or reaching its capacity not only will impact on the likelihood of uh, problems occurring, but there will also be increased pressure and strain on staff, which in turn will lead to bigger issues. Again, I'll uh, refer you back to the Milliman report, which uh, has a good explanation of the Bayesian method, including some case studies. All right, having identified potential risks um, mapped business objectives, drivers and causes and modelled um, some alternative scenarios and then selected um, what you wanted to monitor using key risk indicators referred to as KRIs. You'll need now is to turn your enterprise risk management system into a proactive tool um, that can identify changes and in external influences. A common method used to identify emerging risks is known as environmental scanning. Environmental scanning entails carefully monitoring uh, of the organization's internal and external environments to detect early signs of challenges or opportunities that may influence the organization's current or future plans. Um, it involves obtaining both factual and subjective information on potential challenges and opportunities to increase our awareness of the key risks we face. The key to making the process proactive is embedding triggers into your system that initiate reassessment of the risks on any substantial change identified from your environmental scanning. Using the Bayesian network uh, methodology to, as a calculator uh, with inputs from these observable KRIs, the model can then be used to update the current status of risks, risks and even used uh, for what-if analysis. We now have a tool for not only defensive readiness but that can also be used to target growth opportunities and identify the fastest path to market. These same techniques can also be used for sensitivity analysis, stress testing or capital assessment. The biggest advantage though is relating risks, causes and strategies back to the strategic business objectives of which the primary one is increasing shareholder value. You can read uh, an article I wrote on it on my blog on the Fast Track website. To sum up then, um, structural and causal model modeling, although it um, can be used on simple organization, organizational systems, is aimed at understanding complex systems and therefore it's perfect for a true uh, enterprise risk management system since that is an integration of multiple different risk frameworks. Putting it all together, we have to create uh, an ERM of multiple risk frameworks targeted to the nature of uh, risk appropriate to each part of the business. We then link the risk back to strategic business objectives, quantifying the risks in terms of the measured effect on business objectives. We develop a focused, positive focus risk culture committed to not just supporting, achieving outcome results. Use scenario analysis to identify potential risk events, states and possible outcomes. Then use cognitive mapping to identify the risk drivers, causal agents and interrelationships. Set up a neural network of those relationships to facilitate a two-way flow of cause and effect to make the system dynamic and responsive to movements. Set up an environmental scanning regime and integrate triggers um, to initiate reassessment of models if there are any substantial changes to influences. Use Bayesian uh, modelling to calculate both the severity and likelihood of risks, drivers and outcomes. Then aggregate both horizontally and vertically using the measures of the uh, business objectives. And finally, investigate the wide range of IT tools available to automate all the above, including FastTrack, <laughs> Um, Microsoft Link, Yammer uh, and definitely have a look at Excel 2013. 
because uh, it includes some new features including simple uh, business intelligence and big data functionality. Uh, I'll include a, a selection of these in the reference material I sent out uh, to attendees. Well, that's it. Thank you everybody for attending my talks. Um, it was a lot of informa information to cover in uh, such a short time, but hopefully it's given you an idea of what is possible with enterprise risk management in the 21st century. Thank you. Fiona? Thank you, Greg. Each of the three webinar sessions in this risk management series have been recorded and attendees get access to all three sessions as well as an excerpt of Greg's pre-released ebook, Mastering 21st Century Risk Management. Thank you everyone for attending. Goodbye.